Hey everybody, uh, doing another live video here. Um, getting down to the end of these blogs that I wrote. Um, I started this series several years ago. Um, there's just a handful left. This one here I wrote uh, back in September of 2014, and I titled it Parable of a Diseased City. I don't exactly recall um, why I wrote this or what led to um, to me writing this, it's, it's, as I read through it earlier, it's obviously, um, a parable of the gospel. So I, I think it's just an attempt to share the gospel in a different way to, to add some clarity. Um, Jesus used parables, you know, they're, they're word pictures that, um, explain a truth in a different way. And I guess, uh, it's pretty helpful. I guess there's a lot of people that learn that way that let learn better, not necessarily through like textual academic study, but through uh, visual vis visualization and um, just just seeing it um, through a parable lens. So I'm guessing that's why I wrote this. I, I like I say I don't recall exactly what was on my mind or what led into this, but um, all parables. Um, it said that they they take a truism and explain it. But no parable is going to give it a perfect analogy. It's not going to be a perfect example of the gospel. The gospel itself is perfect to, to just, you know, uh, understand what the gospel says. But uh, but a parable helps give some, some like I say, clarity or visualization. Visual, I can't say that word. Vis visualization um, to the gospel. So hopefully this helps um, give some understanding. Uh, as always, before jumping into this, I, I do want to pray. Uh, if you're not able to watch this live or not able to watch the whole thing, this will be a short one. It's, it's just a short little article, but um, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and watch this and all my videos at your convenience. Um, I usually get these posted as soon as I'm done going live. Uh, my YouTube channel is KingRam417. That's K, my middle initial, Ingram, my last name, 417. Um, if you're not on YouTube or you don't like to use uh, YouTube, you can find me on Rumble under that same username. So uh, before jumping into this, um, I do want to pray. So if you want to pray with me, I'd appreciate it. Well, Lord, I, I don't recall what went into writing this article, but, um, I know I'm, I'm personally, um, uh, not a person that learns this way. I, I take things straightforward academically or, or through a text, you know, it's, I get clarity and understanding that way. Um, I guess this is more like a, for people with a poetic mind, I guess, or an artistic mind, um, which I don't have, but, I do pray that um, this idea that you gave, um, hopefully this was inspired by you. Hopefully it'll benefit others. I, I pray your blessing upon it. I pray, pray that um, you would use this to give clarity to, to your gospel, um, to your message of hope and salvation, uh, to the message of the danger and peril people face without you. Um, the condemnation of sin and the just judgment that is coming upon this world. Um, just open hearts and minds, Lord. Lead them to you. Glorify yourself and your gospel through this message. I pray that you be with me as I read this, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so like I say, I titled this uh, Parable of a Diseased City. Um so again, this is kind of a, a story, a, a word picture. Um, so I start out here. There was an entire region uh, that was infected with a deadly disease. They were a mining community uh, with an abundance of riches buried beneath the earth. Rubies, gold, silver, and all sorts of precious gems. But there was one area that the government deemed off-limits. It was saturated with diamonds, but if mining were conducted there, it would release a deadly poisonous gas into the air and water supply. 
hence the government warnings. The region's citizens voted unanimously, 100% of the community, um, to ignore the government's mandates and to get those diamonds. They cast out all the government workers and started to dig up the diamonds. The gas released was invisible, odorless, and tasteless, and very slow acting. As such, the citizens rejoiced in their added wealth and disregarded the warning of the poisoning. Now, every once in a while, a person would disappear from the community, but the citizens ignored that and figured, well, that's not going to happen to me. Now, the facts of this disease are terrifying. It goes mostly undetected for varying amounts of times. It's completely sporadic. You may not even see symptoms for years or decades, or it may happen in minutes. Once the symptoms hit, it's too late. The first symptom causes pe the person to withdraw from everyone else. Like an animal that wanders off to die alone, so do those with this disease. They flee the region so that nobody is aware of them anymore. Then it twists the insides and causes massive and painful convulsing, so much that it causes clenching of the teeth that breaks the jawbone and all the teeth. It also causes all the nerve endings to fire off at once and makes the person feel as if their entire body is engulfed in flames. It's irreversible and it's 100% fatal. Everyone in the region has this disease. Now, because the region violated the government mandates, they've sealed themselves off completely and rejected the government's authority over them. They will not allow the mention of the government and even deny that the government exists. Their riches and pleasures are too enjoyable for them and they refuse the thought of losing it. After all, they say, no one's dying from this supposed poison. There are rumors of what happened to the people who disappeared, but most people just assume it's a myth. Those people didn't die, they just left the region. However, a cure has been found at great cost and is being offered for free to anyone who will take it. A separate region has been established for those who have been cured. The cure has been added to the water supply of this other region and cures 100% as long as they continue to drink from this water supply. If they stop, the disease will come back. Volunteers are inoculated against the disease and sent into the diseased region to proclaim the good news of the cure. But the citizens mock them. They scream at these volunteers that there's no such thing as a disease. There's no such thing as a government. Everyone's just fine. As a matter of fact, they're more than fine. They're rich and they're enjoying life. Who are these volunteers to come and tell them that they're sick and they need to leave the area? So they ignore the volunteers. They jeer at the volunteers. And because the volunteers keep quoting the government as the source of authority, they often beat, imprison, and kill these volunteers. But some people believe the volunteers and take the medicine. And then they, seeing the results, also become volunteers trying to warn the masses. Eventually, some of these volunteers see the danger involved of proclaiming this message. And so they soften the blow, so to speak. Instead of warning of the disease and offering the cure, they start promoting the cure as some solve-all feel-good pill. You'll never have any more problems. This message sounds great and has massive results. Many take the, the fake cure or, or the inoculation, but they don't leave the diseased area. And then when the problems of life happen, they consider the cure to be foolish and turn away from it. Some of the area's own citizens see the potential lucrativeness of this cure, and so they manufacture their own version of the cure. 
Then they start to sell it using all the charisma and motivation they can muster. They scream out, we have the real cure. Ours is the only one that works. But they have no idea how the disease works. They don't even believe in the disease. Their cure is no more than a placebo. And there are others yet who are jealous for the crowds that, that follow people proclaiming this cure. They desire to have the masses follow them and, and not the volunteers. So they add ingredients to the cure. Some add a spice or a flavor. Others add multiple spices and flavors. But the cure is specifically designed. Any change to its chemical composition renders it ineffective. Any adding or taking away will cause the cure to lose its effectiveness. But these folks don't care, as long as they're perceived as leaders with the real cure. That's all that matters to them. But then there are the faithful volunteers. They continue to risk all by proclaiming the message that they were sent to proclaim. That the citizens are deadly sick. And, and soon, the government is coming back into the region by force to wipe out all traces of the disease. The government will remove its volunteers and then burn everything. The mine, the riches, the water, even the air. And anyone not inoculated will not be able to leave for risk of spreading the, the disease. So they must take the cure. It's their only hope. These volunteers are mocked and ridiculed and killed, but they continue to warn because they cannot bear the thought of these people perishing in the, in the cleansing that is coming. They point out the vicious symptoms of this disease and are accused of being hateful, bigoted, and fear-mongering. But the people still won't listen. So they must point out the awful effects of this disease. They must try everything to get the masses to listen and to take the cure. It's the only way these people will be saved. In the end, the region was wiped out, as the government had said they would. The volunteers continued to proclaim the cure until the very end. They were persecuted more and more and hated with a vengeance for trying to ruin a good thing. The citizens united under a powerful and charismatic ruler and turned absolutely vicious against the volunteers while taking a pledge to never buy into the cure. The vast majority of the citizens never listened to the, to the volunteers and never took the cure. They perished in awful ways in the government cleansing. The government came in and removed the volunteers and everyone who had been inoculated, because some people did listen, and then they proceeded with the fire. The volunteers and everyone who had been inoculated were welcomed into the new region with the pure and life-giving water, never to be affected by the disease again. The smoke from the other region continues to rise and will forever. The flames were very hot, hot enough to melt the elements. So like I said, that's just a short parable um, of the gospel. Uh, the gospel says that um, we are all infected by a disease, and that disease is sin. Because of our original uh, forefathers, our original parents, Adam and Eve, in the fall in the garden, we are all born with this disease. The region is earth. We're all stuck here. We're all born into it. We are all corrupted by this disease. And many people are blinded by the, the riches of this world, the pleasures of this world, the pleasures of sin, of doing what the government said not to do, the government being God. And, and so the whole world is sick. But God, in his mercy, awakens some people to the truth of this disease and offers the cure which came at a great price. His son, Jesus Christ, had to suffer and die as payment for, as judgment for this disease, as judgment for the sin. He, he gave his own life 
taking the punishment upon himself and offering uh, his, his righteousness as a free gift to anyone who would repent and believe, who would take the inoculation. And some people, by the grace of God, are awakened to the fact of this disease and the truth of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and are born again, and they become the volunteers, so to speak. We proclaim the gospel to the world. We warn others about the dangers of sin, about the dangers of this persistent, sinful life, and how judgment is coming. God is coming in the end to wipe out every sinner, to, to bring justice and judgment, to bring a final uh, cleansing fire to this earth, so to speak. And so we proclaim that gospel, even though the world hates it, because we testify against its sin. We tell others about the sinfulness of sin and the dangers of sin, but the world loves to sin, so they hate those that proclaim that message. They turn against us. They, they ignore us. They mock us. They ridicule us. They call us crazy. They imprison us. They torture us. They kill us. Uh, just to to get us off their case, to get it to so that their conscience won't be bothered anymore. They just want to rid us, uh, to rid themselves of our voice. But but faithful ministers continue to proclaim that message regardless of the cost because they know what is coming. They know the judgment that is coming, and they know that these people will not escape, no matter what they try to convince themselves, no matter what they try to pretend. These people have been awakened to the truth. They've seen the truth of the light, and so they, they proclaim this message as a warning, knowing that it might cost them their lives, but they must continue to proclaim it because it's the people's only hope. And then there's fake ministers, fake gospel, who, who use this message, who see, hey, this has an effect on some people, so let me tap into this. And they use it to proclaim their own message and to get rich. They stand on the television and proclaim uh, that they are preachers of the gospel. They proclaim that they have the message of Christ. But what they're really preaching is greedy riches. Tithe, give to us, give us 10% and God will bless you. They leave out the sin and judgment and condemnation in hell, the real message. And instead they proclaim, just listen to us. Just proclaim yourself to be a Christian and everything good will happen to you. You'll have all these blessings. Others uh, do it just for leadership roles. They want the authority. They want the position of rulership. Um, so you have these fakes out there that are leading people astray. Uh, proclaiming a, a, a so-called gospel that is no gospel, proclaiming a cure that is no cure. But yet the volunteers persist because there is coming a day of judgment. The Lord will return um, and he will wipe out all those who oppose him, all those who stand against them, all those that are not in his kingdom. And he will burn the earth with, with fire. The Bible says that even the elements will melt. Um, and then those who have been saved, those who have been inoculated through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, will be raised up with glorified bodies and will be translated, so to speak, into this kingdom of God, this perfect um, existence with no more disease, no more sin, no more suffering, no more sorrow, and they'll live forever. But those who rejected Christ, those who turned against the gospel, uh, will be tormented forever. The smoke of their torment will ascend forever, uh, the scriptures say. Uh, in the lake of fire, the, the finality of judgment, because God is just and, and disobedience must be dealt with. So that was the, the aim of this parable. Um, hopefully it helps somebody. Hopefully it, it gives some clarity. But as always, if, if you weren't able to watch this whole thing or you're just catching the end of it, um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can watch this and all my videos at your convenience. It's King Ram 417. That's K, my middle initial, Ingram, my last name, 417. If you're not on YouTube, you can find me on Rumble under that same name. And uh, Lord willing, I should have this posted uh, shortly here. All right, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I love you. We'll talk to you next time.